Hello everyone and welcome back. Let's start transforming our running Angular application into a progressive web application. Now what we're about to do is we are going to add to this application the Angular service worker and we're going to configure it. If we would want to scaffold a new application from scratch from an empty folder using the Angular service worker, we could do so using the Angular CLI with the following command. We will do ng new for a new application the name of the application and then this flag minus minus service worker. This is going to add the service worker from the beginning, but most likely you already have a running Angular application that you want to turn into a progressive web application. So we are going to do that here instead of running this command. We're going to see exactly what this command does as well. What changes does it do to the scaffolded project? The first thing that this command adds to our application is the service worker itself. So we are going to go here to our dependencies and we are going to make sure that our package.json includes the Angular service worker, which is the case here already in our scaffolded application. So if you want to add it to a separate application, make sure to add the Angular service worker manually here and run npm install in order to have it available. In this case, because you already executed npm install for this project, you already have the service worker available in your machine. The next thing that we are going to do is, we are going to configure the Angular CLI build system in order to include the service worker in the production application. Let's see how we are going to do that. We are going to head over here to the Angular CLI configuration file, which is the angular-cli.json file. This is a JSON configuration file that configures what the Angular CLI does exactly. So we're going to head over here to our application that we have. It's here on the apps array and we are going to have here this client side application that gets built in production. To this application, we are going to add here a flag that will add a service worker to the production build. And we're going to add it here below the environments configuration. So we set this flag service worker to true and with this in place, the Angular CLI knows that whenever it's building this application, it also needs to include a service worker. That service worker would already give us download and install capabilities to our application out of the box. Right now, in order for the Angular CLI to be able to build and add the service worker to the dist folder, and to include it in the running production application, we are also going to need a configuration file. This is a build configuration file that configures how the service worker is going to be built. This file should be located here on your source folder and it's called ngsw, which stands for angular service worker config.json and we're going to have a look at it. If you are turning your application into a PWA, you will have to add this file manually. Let's have a look at this file. This file contains already some service worker configuration. Notice that this file will not be used at runtime by your application. This is a build step configuration file. The first option that you will need to configure is what is your index page. This is the default index page index.html. Next, we will need to configure the service worker caching behavior at runtime. We are going to configure here how should the multiple bundles of the application, the JavaScript and CSS bundles, how should those bundles be cached at runtime. We are going to do that here at the level of the asset groups property. We can also add configuration for caching REST API data. Right now, for the download and installation capabilities of our application, we are going to focus on only the asset groups. That is the goal of this section. So we have here an asset group that configures how the application itself should be cached. We are running this in mode prefetch. This means that all the files that are specified here will be downloaded on the background by the service worker once our application starts up. This is so that it does not disrupt the user experience. In the reminder of this section, we are configuring what files exactly from the application should be cached by the service worker at startup time. Here on the files property, we are specifying a couple of separate files that have a constant name that is exactly the same with 
each deployment of the application. We have here, for example, the index.html file itself, which will not change the name with each new build. So as you can see, the service worker will cache the index.html file itself. This means that whenever our application gets offline, and we will do a demo of that, we will still be able to load the page from the cache without having to use the network. For example, we also have here a second file, which is the fav icon. This is the icon that gets used whenever you save a website as a bookmark. We also have here a series of version files. These version files are going to include any CSS bundles generated by the application, any JavaScript bundles and any lazy loaded files that we might generate with the Angular CLI, these files will change their name depending if the content has changed since the last build or not. We will be seeing these files in a moment in the dist folder. We also have here some configuration for some other static assets. This corresponds to the assets directory here in our source folder. This is going to contain images, and other static resources that our website might need. These have been configured to be installed in lazy mode. This means that these will only be cached by the service worker the first time that they are requested. Let's now see what all this configuration, the behavior that we have specified for version files, for static assets, what does this correspond to at runtime? Let's start up our application. Before that, we need to register the service worker on the application. So we need to go here to the application module. And here at the level of the imports of our application module, we are going to register the service worker. In order to do that, we have registered here the service worker module and we are specifying here the name of the service worker file. This name should not be changed and we will see this file in the dist folder in a moment. We are going to make sure that we enable this service worker only in our production build. If we would enable that in our development build, we would have to clear the service worker constantly on localhost. And with this in place, we have all the steps necessary to make this application downloadable and installable. So let's try this out. We are going to head over to the command line and on the same directory where we have our package.json, we are going to use the following command ng build minus minus prod. With this, we will have on the dist folder the output of our application together with the service worker. Let's have a look at the output. Once the build is finished, we are going to head over here to the dist folder and we're going to have a look at what we have here. In the next lesson, we are going to review the content of the dist folder, see what each file corresponds to, and then we are going to run our first progressive web application.